Okay, next. Yes. Jim Mark at Celeste Radio. Um, I had some questions about, in regards to the BronyCon documentary, um, some of the people that might have had a few you know, disagreements or whatever about the documentary, some of that has been attributed in, in part to um, some of the expenses uh, that were laid out afterwards and how much was being charged to have actual copies of material. A lot of people thought, you know, that it, it should be, you know, free and poetic and that's where, some of the, that's where some of the issues came with some of the pirating problems. Um, my question is, do you guys think that at any point that there will be a release of, of what the expenses, what they have gone to in order to make the documentary what it is, in order to try and quell some of that? Um, um, okay, so how do you want to term that? Uh, well, he, that he's question? wanting to ask you, if, will the, I guess, will the financial records of the Deprodi.com documentary going to be released? At no. Um, our obligation is to the people who contributed to the to to the um, to, to the um, uh, Kickstarter. Our obligations are to nobody else. Um, we we did things in that documentary which are sort of unheard of in your favor, which is to say that we used all of the money to 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 put up onto the screen. Um, our model was such that, um, in retrospect, it was perhaps the wrong model. Um, it was a model that has been the classic um, film model that, that's been going on for years and years. When we first got, when we asked for $60,000, um, we had already pre-planned that it would be two cameras at um, a two-day event, which would then require six, perhaps eight weeks of work. And we were comfortable with that. It's not a big commitment on our part. And, and it's one that um, seemed all very, very doable. When we got $322,000. And you weren't asking for three hundred. And we were not asking for that. We were both um, delighted, but a little horrified. <laughs> uh, because now we, we, we felt an enormous obligation to make sure that we use that money wisely and, and used all of that money that way. But we were now into, into a film that w had gone from sort of a quasi-amateurish type thing into a full network film with all of the attendance things that go in, into that. That is, um, when you go from, from two cameras to six cameras, you go from 50 hours to 450 hours. You're not just tripling the content, you're, triple, you're more than tripling. But that's right. You have then not just one editor, you have four editors. You have machinery, I mean equipment that has to, you, you, have to, you, you, you just have a lot of equipment now that you have to buy. It isn't the type of thing that one can sort of do. And I know that, that the, the general public has come to this sort of prosumer kind of, well, you know, I have uh, 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 whatever. Well, you have to beat the thing that you can buy at Best Buy. Yeah, that's right. But but we have to do it at a, at, at a pro level. I mean, not a prosumer level, but at actually a pro level. Also, the, the we began to then say, um, well, how will we, you know, think of this? And that is, is that two cameras, two days, which was the inner circle, then began to move out because we had to figure out how to use the money wisely and, and, and just increase the scope of the show. Well, that means, in this case, going to Israel. It means going to Germany, going to, to these places. Um, it's, it's actually cheaper to send our people there than to use internal crews that are there. Um, um, but we're, we're just adding more and more footage and more and more time. Then, um, and th I'm just, this is all, I'm sort of skipping around here, but uh, uh, then, then I can't tell you the amount of effort and costs involved in attorneys. Attorneys to make sure that it's truly a um, fair use film, truly fair use, you know? which is fair to Hasbro, fair to the people, but 
oh my God, the, the amount of times that, that that has to go through and be looked at by attorneys, and then you know pull this out, and, you know, and then re-edit it this way, and do the blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, the monies that it took just to find out that, guess what, there's been no other major brony film. Well, whatever, $2,700 to find out like what we already know. I mean, you kind of go, I mean, enough already. But so but all of those, that, then the movie doesn't that you, exactly, exactly. And then, and then, and then just things that I didn't know about. I mean, I, I sort of knew kind of, but you know, all of this footage, and then all of it has to go through um, two weeks of color correction and two weeks of, of whatever, you know, of audio, and, and you know, on and on and on. We delivered in spades what we said we were going to deliver, a, a film that was respectful, insightful, Anybody in the business who is where this, where it first was looked at, went would look at this and they went, "Wow, man, there's a lot of production up there." Because in the normal world, what would have happened is that thirty-two, uh, uh, three hundred twenty-two thousand dollars, you, you would have a studio, you know, or, or not a studio, but a, a, a network. A network would say, "We will license a brony thing, and we will give you three hundred twenty-two thousand." The company would then take I don't know, a quarter, uh, a third, off the top, and pay their pay the company for all the value, you know, the producers and all that, you know, whatever they, however they want to organize that. Because these are the people that are making that production. That's right, and then what would actually go up on the screen would be twenty. Uh, two hundred and twenty-two thousand, not three hundred and twenty-two thousand. Mike and I made a uh, a choice, which is ultimately perhaps not uh, uh, knowing what we know now was perhaps not the best choice. We simply said, you know, that's one of the things that we've sort of uh, this the way you know a third off the top or what have you. We can't do that. Um, we we want to make sure that we put all of the monies on the screen, as much as it takes to put up on the screen. We, we need to do that. So I think in for full circle to the question, then what you're saying is 100% of the production monies that were brought in were used on production. They were used on, on production. On production on salaries, money. all the below the line people. Everybody who was professionally hired to do got paid. And there were six people who you don't know what you normally do is that the writer gets a percentage of the back end the director gets a percentage of the back end and in this case Lauren who we brought into the project and we gave her a percentage when we said and it was really important because as far as I'm concerned this is Lauren's show she created this show and I wanted it to be I wanted everything to go through her to make sure that we were getting it right. But that means access. She's on another show. She has a lot of work to do. So you have to say, Lauren, we're going to give you a piece of the show. But that means we need to be able to give you a call. Um, uh, Tara, same thing. Um, and then Mike and I. Mike is really the person who has done the vast majority of the work. The vast majority of the work. Um, he has become a one-man production company uh, for this. So the notion was is that um, we would give this to the people who paid for it, and we would sell it to the people who hadn't, with the notion that from that sale, those other six people would be taken care of. Mostly, I wanted to make sure that Mike was taken care of, that the, the, the writer and director, you know, what have you, but I'm not so concerned about myself, and I'm sure that, frankly, Lauren and Tara are not quite as concerned because we're in a different category. Um, when we sent it out, as we had always wanted to do, to the, to the people who had contributed, to discover within I don't know, half an hour that it was simply all around, all around the world, all of a sudden we saw our model crash. And it was unfortunate and, 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 and sort of hurtful because we went, oh, um, 
um, it's, this is not going to be, we're not going to be able to recover on this. Um, for those who think that it's free, if you didn't pay for it, it's not free. You know, I understand that, you know, and listen, I pirate stuff too. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I understand that. Um, and sometimes one can justify and go, well, it's a big company, and it's, you know, or this is, you know. But in our case, in our case, we only have one product, right. which is this. Right. So, and you know who the people are. You know it's Mike and Nat and Laurent and John and Tara and Laura. That, those are the people who you're affecting. Right. Um, so, so that's where we are about it. Um, I don't need to prove to anybody that we spent the money properly. Uh, um, nor do I need to justify to people who were, you know, carrying on. I mean, we got, I mean, we got such, sometimes such ridiculous stuff that I don't even read anymore. Because it doesn't matter to me. The film is done. It's done. We